Hello everyone, my name is Cameron. Welcome back to the channel. And um Yeah. It's a super showdown. Um Yeah. Uh first match was the Usos versus the Revival. I had predicted the Usos. The Usos won. It was a really good match, kind of obvious. It was gonna be a good match. These two teams have had very fantastic matches the past few months. Uh one on predictions. The finish was standard, Uso fair, double super kicks. Yeah. Uh, match number two, surprisingly, was the Universal Championship match. Uh, Rollins versus Corbin. I predicted Rollins. Rollins retained after a roll up uh, because John Cohen pushed um, Baron Corbin basically into it after Corbin got pissy because John Cohen was saying drop the chair. Uh, 2 0 on predictions. It was a pretty decent match. Corbin hit the end of days after. Lesnar came out with a steel chair. Heyman Tripp getting into the ring. Uh, low blow to Lesnar, hit unloads with the chair, stomp on the briefcase, Rollins leaves with the title. Um, yeah. Match number three is the Intercontinental Championship match. The Demon King, Finn Balor versus Andrade. I predicted Balor. Balor retained at the end of it. It was a fantastic match. Kind of obvious that it was going to be 3 0 on predictions. The paint was basically all but gone on Balor by the end of the match because of how hot Saudi Arabia was. Uh, match number four, singles match. Uh, Roman Reigns versus Shane McMahon. I predicted Reigns. Shane won after a claymore from Drew. The match was eh. Three and one predictions. Um, oh, and I should mention the match between Alexa Bliss and Natalya never got uh, approved, so it never happened. The Saudi government didn't approve it. Match number five, men's handicap match. The Lucha House Party versus Lars Sullivan. Uh, predicted Sullivan. Lucha House Party eventually got DQ'd after jumping in, just all stomping on Sullivan. It wasn't a bad match, which surprised me a bit. I was not expecting it to be decent at all. 4-1 uh, on predictions. Uh, they beat Sullivan down to the bell, then he got back up and basically murdered them. Match number six, men's non-sanctioned singles match. Randy Orton versus Triple H. I predicted Triple H. Um, after a lot of beating and Triple H going for a punt kick, Orton reversed it into an RKO out of nowhere. Uh, he won a fantastic match, 4-2 on predictions. Uh, match number 7, singles match, Bobby Lashley, Braun Strowman. I predicted Strowman. Uh, Lashley went to do some top rope move, which I don't know why he tried to do it. Strowman won right after with two power slams in a row. Mm, match was eh. It was better than I thought it was going to be, but it wasn't very good. It still was trash, to be honest. 5-2 uh, on predictions. Match number 8, WWE Championship match, Kofi Kingston versus Dolph Ziggler. I predicted Kingston. Uh, by the end of the match, Kofi retained. Uh, it was a fantastic match, 6-2 and two on predictions. Uh, they have a rematch coming up with Stomping Grounds in Steel Cage. Which Kofi did win with help from Xavier Woods. I should, I should point that out. Match number 9, the 50-man Battle royal. I predicted The Miz. Um, in the end, actually it was a 51-man. We found this out watching What the Fuck Moments. It was a 51-man. Uh, Mansoor ended up winning after last eliminating Elias. Uh, surprisingly, it was a good match. 6-3 and three on predictions. And finally... We get into the match that I, I I don't know what to say in this match to be honest. Match number ten, singles match, The Undertaker versus Goldberg. I predicted Taker. Taker ended up winning the match. It was it was dog shit to be honest. It was good for a bit and then it was dog shit. Uh, seven to three on predictions. So basically, what happened is Goldberg. Well, first off, he was bleeding before he even got into the match. He head by the door, and you could see a small spot of blood on his forehead. Um, but during the match, after a very terrible knee bar, which then got called a heel hook five seconds later, uh, Goldberg went to spear or shoulder tackle Taker in the corner. Taker moved, and Goldberg basically completely head butted the post and busted himself open, and from what everyone knows of at this point concussed himself, knocked himself out during the match. There's a lot of people who were apparently saying pretty fucked up things and kind of like laughing their asses off about this happening, which that's not funny. That's somebody's livelihood. That's somebody's health being impacted there. Um, but it just got worse from there. Um, there was a tombstone spot where Goldberg slipped down and basically it was an Austin Hart situation all over again where Goldberg's neck just his head went straight on the canvas and it just it should have ended right there it should have and then they did a jackhammer spot which Goldberg obviously being concussed couldn't get 
Taker up high enough, and when he did the twist, ended up basically dropping Taker on the back of his neck. Um, and honestly, after that tombstone, it didn't need to finish. It it brings a point to me. It brought a point to me and Jesse that they should have stopped. They they didn't need to bring Taker back for this. They really didn't. His match at Crown Jewel was decent enough, and it was fine to watch to the point of it was not a bad match compared to what it could have been because it was four men who were 50 or older in the ring. But this match really kind of put to the point that this is it. Taker doesn't need to do anything else to prove how good he is. Obviously, though, it it, it brings the point of they should probably... He, probably is going to want to do one more match. They're probably going to want to do one more match. Because gold, because Taker going on on that is just... It's it's sad, really. It's depressing. Like, that entire match depressed the hell out of me. Because these are two people whose careers have basically been going since I've been alive. And I've enjoyed watching both of them throughout their careers. Especially Taker. Just to see that. And just get really sad. It's like, I get it's a nostalgia thing, you know? But at some point, the nostalgia trip needs to end with this because you've seen Taker in each pay-per-view in decreasingly, like, okay matches. Like, each time, decreasingly, it's getting worse and worse. Wait. No, they had their their DX versus Brothers Destruction at um, Super Showdown last year, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, it was. What the fuck did you do at Crown Jewel? Yeah, I don't think you did anything. Um, but the match at Super Showdown last year was pretty decent. I can't remember what the fuck he did. I, I feel like he had a match at Crown Jewel. All right, give me a sec. We got a bit confused. So Crown Jewel ha did have the tag match. It was Super Showdown last year that had Triple H versus Taker, which you could kind of see throughout those few matches last year that he had, the Cena match, which... Honestly, in my opinion, was very well done. It was actually a decent match, and it didn't take a whole lot out on Taker's body. And then they had the Greatest Royal Rumble with Rusev in the casket match, which was pretty damn well. Uh, pretty pretty good, to be honest. Then they had Crown Jewel, which... Or not Crown Jewel, sorry. They had Super Showdown, which started to kind of, you could kind of see him maybe like, okay, maybe it's time for him to end. And then Crown Jewel happened with a lot of fucked up, a lot of messing up in the entirety of the pay-per-view really with those four, including Triple H basically fucking up his arm completely, which was really bad. Uh, and then you had this, which was just a shit show of two men who had dominating careers respectively in their, in the companies they were in who have no reason to be in the ring right now. They had no reason to be in the ring. Except for the fact that the royal family wants the nostalgia. And you can find you can kind of see that with how they ask for certain people who aren't alive anymore from for Crown Jewel or for Greatest Royal Rumble. But watching two wrestlers who were dominant in the past and this was so they could kind of some bullshit about their legacies and then they ended up making their legacies look worse by nearly dying in the ring, quite fucking literally, which we've seen multiple people die in the ring in wrestling. Even one recently who was 54 years old who died in the ring from a heart attack, which these two men literally almost just paralyzed each other in the ring. I mean, to be fair, Goldberg almost paralyzed himself first, but then it just got worse and worse and worse from there. I think it's one of those situations where you can finally see that Taker doesn't need to go any further, especially given the interview he gave a while back, saying he doesn't want to be in the ring with with a son and a father at ringside, saying, I used to watch this guy when he was good. I think it's finally time that Taker hangs up the trench coat, the hat, and the boots, and the gloves and stuff, and just goes and lives his life. He has nothing else to prove. I think you can agree with that, right, Jesse? Yeah, I do. That it's just... It's it. He doesn't need to go further. Doesn't need to do anything else. He was a badass. He's, I would love to say he's still a badass, but after that match, it's hard to say that. They need to let Taker retire 
and just live the rest of his life in peace because Taker and for that matter Goldberg not being able to do simple tasks later on in their lives is not something I want to hear about. And for the people who do get pleasure out of watching Goldberg concuss himself, hear what's wrong with the wrestling community. And I'm saying that fully as someone who's watched wrestling majority of his life. There's nothing funny about somebody getting a concussion, busting their head open, and having irreparable brain damage done. And for people who think it's funny, do you really think it was funny when Chris Benoit, after years of concussions, did what he did? Or the fact that Daniel Bryan literally almost got paralyzed in the ring because of his concussions? I didn't think so. So before you start laughing at Goldberg because he apparently can't wrestle, realize that the man literally nearly died in the ring on Friday, along with The Undertaker, for your enjoyment, which it was not a good match. It was not as good as anybody would have wanted it to be, including Goldberg and Undertaker. But it doesn't give you the right to laugh about a dude concussing himself. Even if it was in a really odd way. That's the review for Super Showdown. A all around at the end depressing show. Stay golden. Peace.